Welcome to At His Feet Podcast. Uh, this is a place where we simplify doctrinal issues. And like we always say, we also invite you to watch our youth-led segment called Steadfast Pursuit. And so together with the big biblical doctrines at his feet podcast, we are trying to simplify what is uh, the truth and especially the biblical truth. Now, today we I want to start with a quote. Uh, the quote is by Tony Evans. And this is what Tony Evans says. He says that in Revelation... God discloses his truth. Through inspiration, he sees that it is recorded for us. And by illumination of his spirit, he enables us to understand and apply it. And so today I know that we have come a long way mm. in our discussion on the attributes of the Bible or doctrines of the Bible. Yes. Or what we call bibliology. Mm -hmm. And uh, our guest who has been with us all the time is here to help us in the discussion of the illumination of the Bible. Yes. So maybe before you just dive in into what Tony is saying, mm -hmm. uh, for those who are seeing you for the first time, you can introduce yourself and then tell us what you think in relation to illumination. Thank you yeah. so much, uh, Reverend Dr. Luke, for having me. My name is Jackson Motier, Reverend Jackson Motier of AIC Revival Fellowship. Um in Molem, Kangundo Road. I'm grateful to be here once again. Looking forward to the, today's discussion and especially on the question of illumination. Uh, Tony Evans, that's a beautiful, beautiful statement. Ah. I should add, and by preservation, mm -hmm. God has kept the word for the world. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Now you can add that. That is very good. So what is illumination? Illumination. Um, I, I think we've been dealing with beautiful doctrines of the Bible yeah. and looking at uh, ways of understanding what we have as the scripture from the question of inspiration to the question of preservation to the question now of illumination yeah. that we are, we are bringing on the table uh, this afternoon. It is the capacity of the word of God, the scripture, to uh, bring the light of God in a heart that is totally in darkness. Mm. It, it, is, it is the ability of God's word bringing life to a dead man. Mm. The ability, the capacity in God's word, the power in God's word to uh, sort of bringing an understanding, illuminating a mm. heart. That mm. word to illuminate mm. is connected to bringing light in a dark room, mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. you know, shedding light where there's no light. Right. And therefore, it is the question of the word of God's capacity to shed light in the heart of one who is totally in darkness. Right. And I think it was... Um, Hebrews 4 and verse number 12 mm. that says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able. So that ability of mm. God's word to divide uh, to the deepest, even through the marrow and the bones and the flesh mm. into the deeper part of man. Mm. One who looks at the word of God as uh, nonsensical, one who doesn't accept in terms of reception of God's word and looks at it as something that does not have a meaning, that is an old um, ancient kind of a script, mm. is able to, by it, be brought to light. Mm. And that is illumination. So the illumination as the concept of uh, light shining? Or, so the, the question here is, yeah. is the Bible itself mm. an illumination or the Bible only gets the attributes of illumination when it changes a person? We need to go back to a few things that we mentioned before. Yeah. One of them was the discussion around the authority yeah. of God's word mm -hmm. and what it is able to achieve when it is proclaimed. And I used a passage in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 37, if you can remember. Right. 
and and, and probably if uh, our, our followers have forgotten, they can go back to uh, episodes. Please, you need to check done. on the episodes that are passed. And, and in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number thirty-seven, Ezekiel that that's a prophetic uh, book. Mm -hmm. You remember, and Ezekiel in a vision is taken to a valley full of dry bones. And I want you to walk with me so that you understand what illumination uh, refers to or mm. what it means to, illum to illuminate mm. in terms of uh, the, the, the Bible. And Ezekiel is asked by God, uh, son of man, are these bones able to live? Mm. And he responds and says, whether they can live or not, Lord, you, you know, know, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm not within the capacity to determine whether mm. they can live or not. Mm. And God tells him, um, prophesy to them. This is proclaim my word mm. to them. Speak my word to them. And, and I'm going slow so that you pick that. God commands the man, Ezekiel, to speak his word to the dry bones, mm -hmm. and the word is, go to them and prophesy, you, all dry bones, mm -hmm. may you live. And then he comes down and he says not any other word, but the word of God, which has a capacity. And the moment he says, oh, you dry bones, may you live. The Bible says the parts, different parts of a body would come together and lingament and meat and flesh is, uh, you know, joined. And there we have, yes, lifeless, but bodies that are full, not dry anymore. And he comes again and tells him, son of man, command the right. winds from the four corners of the earth mm. unto them and they will leave. And he does exactly according to the word of God. I remember I mentioned here that we have uh, at least three different kinds of God's word, uh, or even four, the written word, uh, which is the scripture, the mm -hmm. living word, who is Jesus Christ, the, um, the spoken word, like that one that go speak, you know, the spoken word, and even the proclaimed word. I, I think I didn't mention that, but when... You, you did, actually. When, you didn't mention the Oh, I did. Word. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. Mm. When you come Sunday morning, stand before the people, correctly handle the word of God and say, thus says the Lord, that is God's word that is being proclaimed. Yeah. And it has power. Now... Suppose, and, and, and of course, it ends in the book of Ezekiel that, oh, and behold, a great army of yeah. God. And then he is told, now, this is Israel, mm. and this is their condition. But they need to hear the word of God. And once the word of God is proclaimed to them, then they will be able to live and change. Look at this. When the Bible says it's... It, it's um, the scripture, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. I don't, I'm not imagining of a steel blade or something. Mm. Uh, that's not what I'm looking at. Mm. I, I used to, I think you remember when we were back in school, yeah. I can remember we used to show um, <clears throat> a movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it was a movie or whatever it was. <laughs> and uh, it was called, by the way, it's a nice one. I recommend, I recommend people to, so I, I watched it the other day. <clears throat> okay. I needed to remember them days. It was called The Cross and the Switchblade. Yes. And there were two camps in that movie. Mm. One camp, they called themselves the Mau Mau, and mm -hmm. the other camp called themselves the Israel. Mm. And, and the Mau Mau were rotten. I mean, they were all rotten, but the Mau Mau were extremely evil. And mm. then there's a little church uh, run by David Wilkerson. This is a life story mm. in, 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 the, in the suburbs of uh, London City. And uh, he's running a church in the middle of a gang uh, invaded uh, community. And then you remember, he invites the two gangs to come and they've been fighting one another. And when they came, he actually asked the gang leaders to collect offertory or something. Mm, yes. Gave them the offertory baskets and they go around collecting and then they bring and they're, they're, they're telling one another, he thinks we are going to steal this money. Let's take it to the mm, poor preacher. Mm. And then they bring the money to the poor preacher. And he tells them, man, go sit down. I yeah. want to say something. Yeah. And he speaks about the laugh. And, mm. and even as they fought right in the middle of the hall, 
in, in, in that movie, you would see how the word of God pierced in their hearts and they're shaking. And at the end of the day, many of them give their lives to Christ. Yeah. And eventually, you know what becomes of them. Mm. The word of God is able. It is not only authoritative, but has a power within it mm. to change a man. And that ability to change a man who is dead in sin to become alive in Christ is what illumination is all about. So illumination is the capacity, and I like really the yeah. choice of words. Yeah. The capacity. I, I, and I don't feel sufficient with even that word. Yeah. I'm just trying to look for a better, a better word. word. Yeah. But the capacity that it has yes. to bring impact into yes. the lives of people. And this is not capacity as... Uh, like brought in and planted mm -hmm. in the word of God mm -hmm. by nature because it is the very words of God. Right. You remember in the book of uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, mm -hmm. it is God's breath. Mm -hmm. That's all scripture is God's breath. Mm -hmm. And then you are taught, and it is able to. So when I say the capacity, the ability, it's that which it's able to achieve. Mm -hmm. It's able to correct, it to It is not just a simple, it is not. It's, this is patterned capacity. And, yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yes. No, that's, yes. A, that's a better one. <laughs> now, you know, <clears throat> we, we are actually bringing the doctrine of the Bible mm -hmm. to a close in this yes. episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there will not be any better way to bring that to a close mm -hmm. rather than to look at the application mm -hmm. of God's word. Mm -hmm. And how, can, how else can we look at the application of God's word if we can't trace its impact in illumination? Let Exactly. Let, let me let me let me take you through some bit of a journey. Yes. Whenever you open this word of God, we're not just reading stories in here. Mm. I said before, this is not a book of history, but whenever it handles history, it is right. Eh, you need to say that again. This is not a book of science. Oh, okay. But whenever it handles things to do with science, it is extremely correct. Okay. It is not a geography book, but whenever it mentions geography, it's right. Okay. It is not a philosophy book. Mm. Whenever it handles philosophical ideas, it is correct. This is made. I want to add one. Yes, please. It is not an economic book. Yes, yes. But when it handles <laughs> economy, it is right. Uh, the, 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 I mean, it's so bad it is of not us. It's a gender book. There you go. There you go. And whenever it handles gender issues, it's it is correct. Right. It's right. So when it says a man marries a, a woman, yes. it's that. You don't we want can, to mix it. No, we don't discuss that. I mean, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, period. We will not discuss that. Okay. It's a man leaving the father and mother and cleaving to his wife. No. I mean, that's all. So, Very important. Maybe before you get there. Yes, that, please. Um, I, I was in a panel mm -hmm. uh, some few days ago. Yes. And, and, and in a panel of men's, men's ministry. Mm -hmm. And there was a discussion about creating some policies to deal with the LGBTQ issues. <laughs> in the church? In or the church, in the society? In the society. But the church you create. And I asked one question. Wow. Why do... In fact, I said, I will be very much interested... Yes, yes. ...to look at the policy that we are going to create. Because... So where are we creating them from? Now, that is a good question. Okay. Because <laughs> when I read the scriptures, you are saying it yes, is not yes. a... It is not a contemporary social issues book, but whenever it handles that, yeah. and I see it is a policy in itself. And, and the things the Bible raises are non-negotiables, so, okay. so that we don't sit here and begin to say, my opinion is, my, your opinion is useless okay. when it comes to the things of the Bible. Like it's final and not. No, there's no middle ground. We don't discuss that. For example, when in the book of uh, Matthew chapter number seven, it talks of uh, the broad way that leads to destruction mm. and the narrow way that leads to life. That is all. We mm. don't have two ways. In the book of Amos, it talks about destruction of Israel if they continue in sin and poor worship mm. and thinking that by their piety, acts of piety and worship, they are going to really be preserved. It talks about their destruction. That's a sure one. Mm. It happened. Mm. 
and there are not two ways about it. When it says this is right, we don't discuss that. Have you had people say that uh, when I went to, when you get me the wrong way, I'll mm. put the Bible down and deal with you? Yeah, yeah, of course, those are people that have never been illuminated. What is the extent of illumination? By the word of God. Let me, let me come back to yes, please, that discussion yes. of illumination. Um, I have seen in my life as a pastor, a people that were totally rotten and uh, out of place in terms of who they are in the society. And I've not forgotten your, your, go ahead. Yeah, your yes. item on LGBTQ. Yes, I just find it weird. It, I, it is, it is weird find, also to yeah, me. Yeah, and um, so I've seen people that were totally, totally rotten. Mm. And they were exposed to uh, God through the preaching of God's word. And some would find some interest in the things being preached and even run to me and say, Pastor, I heard you preach during that barrio, mm. for example. I, I'm, I'm having someone in my mind. I heard you speak during the barrio. I've never read the Bible. I normally think it is something stupid to read one book over and over again. Mm, yeah. But when you spoke today, mm. I felt I should come and have a discussion with you. Okay. And we sit down and I introduce to them the gospel mm. in my very little ways with lack of uh, capacity in terms of knowledge mm. and in terms of fluence and in terms of um, conciseness, in terms of my thoughts. I just tell them that Jesus is the savior Amen. and man is fallen and we need Jesus Christ. Mm. And he tells me, and what must I do? I tell mm. them, you do nothing. He did it all. Mm -hmm. Yours is to accept Jesus Christ and live mm. within the confines that the Holy Spirit will teach you and lead you into. And within one year, you have someone who was an outcast, so to speak, in the society, having given themselves into the word of God and literally not only reading, but trying to live and observe things taught in the word of God. Mm. And today, as we speak, the person I have in my mind is actually a church elder. Somewhere. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you call that? What mm. do you call that? You call it illumination. When you expose me to other scripts, there will be little impact mm. because it will be information. But expose me to the word of God. There's tremendous impact because it is dealing with my heart mm. and my heart problem. The books who inform me matters medicine, matters law. Mm. Books who inform me all that. I can have a huge head knowledge on different aspects of life. But expose me to this book. Mm. I will not be reading styles. I will not be reading organizations. And for your information, yeah. it is perfectly organized. Mm -hmm. When it comes to style, it has great style. Oh, yeah. When it comes to understandableness, I talked about it last week. Mm. It is completely understandable. You can understand the word of God. Mm. And as I am exposed to it, I'm deeply convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is the principal illuminator awesome. of our hearts and lives. And he brings me to the light of God's word. Mm. And the intention of God's word is achieved, even as it grows me. Mm. So that someone, and I'm speaking especially about a believer, whether a young person or a grown-up, it doesn't matter. Mm. Someone who has come to faith in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. I think that's clear. Mm. You have come to the Lord through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That person begins as a beginner, as a mm. toddler. Mm -hmm. They are introduced to very soft milk. Yeah. Paul speaks of that language. He says, you cannot continue taking milk. Mm. And so as we grow into maturity, we get into the hard stuff. And so we move from a point of lack of knowledge of the things of God 
to a level of stability yeah. when it comes to the things of God. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of illuminating, the illuminating power of the scripture. Amen. So that this book is not just words that have been scribbled and books that have been put together and organized in Old and New Testament. Mm. That's not the point. Mm. That's not the point. Mm. It carries with it the light of the world. Mm. It carries with it the power to, uh, you know, to serve a sin in the heart of a man. Mm. It carries with it the power to change a non-believer and call them into life mm -hmm. so that the words of God in um, Romans and 8 and beginning from 26 mm -hmm. downwards, which are extremely beautiful, you know, those that he, he, he foreknew, he called and predestined them to, you know, adoption and... I mean, God knew us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, at the appointed time, he called Luke. Mm. And a Luke who was lost in sin. Oh, very lost. Okay. Extremely in the darkness yeah. with no hope, with no help, with no life. No name. With no name, mm. with nothing. That one who was not known is today known by the heavens. Amen. And proclaiming the things of God. Mm. How else? if not by the impact through the Holy Spirit of God's word. And that is the purpose of it coming from God. Amen. He, 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 he has put it in this book that the world will be called to him through it. No, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saturated in those beautiful words yeah. and just, just thinking, mm. how, how do people survive without without a deeper concentration in the word of God because I've seen well, many I love, Christians. I, I love you. I love the word you're using, survive. Like, yeah, they survive. But <laughs> <laughs> Strenuous living. I think so. Because Strenuous living. I, I've actually, I don't know how to, people do ministry mm -hmm. without Bible study. I have uh, been a pastor yeah. for the last 18 years. Mm. And that includes some four years that I was a, a student, but still involved in the ministry. Yeah. And I have preached numerous sermons. I still feel wanting, mm. lacking. Mm. I do. I feel lacking. I envy older, experienced mm -hmm. men that have been there. Mm -hmm. I have interacted with pastors, I've interacted with Christians in a very close way the last 18 years. Mm. The stronger ones, and this is from my perspective as a pastor, are people that are committed themselves in a life of study of the word of God. I totally in agree. Ezra 9 10. Is yes. it Ezra 9 10? Ezra devoted himself mm. to the study, mm. to the practice, and to the teaching of the book of the law. Mm. Those three, he committed himself. This is a he dedicated himself to studying. Mm. And whenever he studied, he he, he preached, he taught. And he lived the things he learned in the scripture. Mm. And, and that is basic for me. That's basic for me. That we will, we will, I mean, you, you cannot manage life. Mm -hmm. You cannot live. You cannot be, you cannot be, you know, uh, successful if you are not studying the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you, you see, sometimes we think studying means reading portions of the scripture. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. No, not, not really. It's not the case. Well, as a beginner, you can start there. Mm. I'm just looking at you as a pastor. And I would ask you, what are your habits? Mm. How do you approach study of the Bible? One of my friends, a lecturer, stated this some uh, while ago. He stated this, that if I'm preaching from the book of John 
and I'm doing expository kind of a preaching in the book of John. Say, for example, I have three sermons from chapter number one. Mm. Every time I prepare from chapter number one, mm. I will read the book of John mm. at least once. Mm. And every time I'm preparing the second sermon from chapter number one, I will read the, the book, book of John. John. Every sermon will be like done after I have read the entire book. Mm -hmm. That level of commitment. So that there are moments I'm reading looking at the repeated words. There are moments I'm reading looking at the imperatives. There are moments I'm reading looking at the indicatives. Mm. There are moments I'm reading just looking at the nouns and verbs and all those things. Other times I'm reading to get the information. So that by the time I'm approaching the last chapter of the book of John, the, that book is completely in me. Mm. That is the study I'm looking at. Awesome. That's one, open book. Mm. But secondly, leave the book. Mm. So that what I'm learning should be seen in my work with Christ. Awesome. It's, awesome. A, it's a serious call mm. for, the, for everybody. Like we, we don't leave it at the study table. Mm. It is taken to the marketplace. We, we don't leave the word of God at the study table. We come with it to our families, to our schools, to our workplace. And we have a society that has completely forsaken the word of God, right. which is able to illuminate yeah. us. And my call, my brother, would be let us give ourselves to the illuminating, eternal, mm. living, word-inspired word of God. Let us give ourselves to the illuminating, inspired word of God. Now, uh, Rev, um, I, I don't know how to say I'm thank sorry, you. I, I, seem, I seem to have lost you. <laughs> I, I got lost into, you know, uh, the, 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 the beautiful words that were coming. Yes. You know, and, 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 and I'm, I'm just, you know, let me, let me give you an example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rev. Mm -hmm. From the time I started being a pastor, yeah. and especially serving with the young people. Yes. The first thing that I said to myself is that I don't know how to do ministry without a Bible study. So when mm -hmm. I was a pastor in Kisumu, we in started a Bible study. Yes. In Nakuru, we started a Bible study. I attended study. Shaba. You did, I yeah. Remember, yeah. And here in Nairobi, we have a Bible study. Mm -hmm. and, and I always feel like when the young people study the Bible, mm -hmm. there is so much that they learn about life and living. Mm -hmm than I can ever say in a sermon. Yeah. And when you allow them to dig deep into the Bible itself, mm. I know there is places for prepared Bible study materials. Mm. But when they read the Bible themselves itself, and discover it, and themselves. discover it, and you know, you know, ask questions about the criticism that you're talking about, yes. and ask questions about its form mm. and its everything, then they come to learn more. It's easy to be their pastor. I've been to Pokot, and I'm sure we don't have time, yeah. even as you ahead, wind up. Please. But I've been to Pokot several times. Yeah. I remember last year, I baptized over 60 people. Oh, you stayed in water? Yeah, it was it was in water. It was mud. Like we dug, okay. you know, and uh, put some water in there. I can show you some very interesting photos. And as we went down, and looked at the people that we were baptizing. I felt like our government should stop using force mm. with some of these communities. Okay. Just send pastors. Mm -hmm. People that are faithful with God's mm. word. The communities expose them to the word of God. There will be the light of God shining in every corner. You need to, you need to, you need, I need to tell you that story of mm. us mm -hmm. being at Chip. Tell her much as well. <laughs> yeah. the word of, there is something about the word of God yeah. and illumination. Yeah. Illuminates the society. Yeah. It illuminates the place. Yes. It brings new. Yeah. And so, friends, I think at that point we are bringing this to an end. But now, because mm. next week we mm. are having a conversation, we want to bring the young people to sit with us. Wow. That's so great. that they can ask us <laughs> questions based on yes, this yes. bibliology. Wow. But now, before that, your yes, last yes. word on how practical, how we should make the word practical in our lives we we, uh, we called we called I, I think we called 
was it Ruben Kigame or someone yes, yes. to speak with us on something close to what you're asking? Mm -hmm. And he opened my mind using the word of God. He sort of twisted. You, you cannot make anything. Mm. You just leave the word. I mean, you live according to the word. Mm. We, we cannot make the word of God work. It works all no. the time. Okay. It's, it's working now in my heart and your yeah. heart. Amen. It is working. Whether I'm functioning or not, the word of God is still working. It is still sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm. My duty and your duty as a Christian is only one to remain where the word of God is. Mm. And I have uh, the two verses in the scripture that I will guide us with. The Colossians chapter number three and verse number 17 verse. It says that in whatever you do, whether in deed or in word, mm. do it in accordance to, and of course I should say in accordance to the word of God, yeah. to the intents of God, to the teaching of God's word. Mm. That is how God's word works. In fact, properly exposed, mm -hmm. and I'm saying taught, mm. properly exposed and brought to the society and brought to a sinner, the word of God will have an everlasting impact. Amen. One who is correctly received the mm. word of God mm. remains not the same anymore. Awesome. And that's how it works in yes. terms of applicability. Mm. It, that's how it works. In fact, it, we don't sit down in a council and decide our church mm. is really struggling here and mm. there. So can we make the word which, of God which kind work? kind of someone's are going to help exactly. us? Exactly. So that you know. people can give and all those things. Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. I feel like this should be an episode, this, man. I think the, you have to remain faithful. And I speak to pastors as a pastor from my heart to theirs. As you handle the word of God with whatever group of, of people, whether old or young, mm. as you handle the word of God, one thing is required of you. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Thank you so much. It was uh, great to be here with you, mm. uh, Reverend Mutie. You have been such an inspiration. And uh, I have to admit I'm proud to call you big brother. Oh, my. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for your passion in the word of God and the way you have been with us consistently sure. at His Feet Podcast. Mm. We continue to welcome you to join together with us at His Feet Podcast. Remember, next week we have a very interesting way to go about it. Yeah, Can't We wait. will be bringing the young people here. We will have an audience mm. and we will, they will ask us questions. And we, I hope you will be there, sir. I'm looking forward. Then we will be answering those questions sure. that concern the Bible. Yes. And they will be coming and they will be real. Yeah. Until next time, thank you so much. Keep it as it at his feet podcast. As you follow the biblical doctrines, please also follow our youth led podcast called The Steadfast Pursuit. God mm -hmm. bless you and see you next time. <laughs>